This week we'll be covering gesture drawing, and we'll be drawing a bit looser than we've done previously on the channel. If you're looking for a more structural approach to understanding poses, have a look at Emulating Evan Amundsen Part 2, where I go pretty in-depth about using primitive forms to generate poses. Sometimes it can be really beneficial to loosen up though, especially when our goal is just to understand the dynamics of a pose. I want you to look at today's lesson as an exercise to build an understanding of how poses contort the body, rather than just as a means to creating finished pieces. So a few basics of what we're looking for when we're doing a gesture drawing. The first is the line of action, or a line that corresponds to the overall movement of the pose. The next thing I typically draw in is the angle of the shoulders and the hips. More often than not, people will shift their weight to one side or the other. Subsequently, I'll tend to draw in the large masses, that being the skull, the ribcage, and the pelvis. And this can be done with either shapes or forms, depending on the situation. Alright, so let's start gesturing in some static poses. I'm keeping these pretty short to just about a minute. It breaks my heart just a little bit to make a video that doesn't preach line quality and good draftsmanship, but I typically warm up with a lot of loose gestures, so I figured it was worth sharing with you guys. So off the bat, you'll notice that I already started with that line of action, the angles of the shoulders and hips, and the major masses. Take note of the balance and the shifting of weight in the person. The center of gravity has to be directly in the center, otherwise the person will tip over. Once again, we start with the line of action. I start to indicate some shadow shapes for the eyes and hair, and then start blocking in the major masses. Try not to be too concerned at this point with perspective or line quality. Our main goal is to observe how the major masses and the appendages shift under various circumstances. It's crucial to observe the positioning of the feet in order to understand how balance is maintained. In this figure, the legs are pretty far separated and the feet are positioned perpendicular to one another. I also like to include some of the fabric folding in my gestures. Notice that this person is tilting backwards, and to compensate for that shift in gravity, the back leg has to be shifted further back. So now to tie this in with our sense of perspective, we can build out all of these poses that we just gestured in, in forms. Feel free to use the ones that I demonstrated in the earlier video on poses, but I tend to jump back and forth between a couple of different variations. If this part is confusing, refer back to any of the perspective videos, which will give you a stronger grasp on how ellipses work and how I'm using them here to indicate the perspective. Anytime you take the natural curvature of the body and convert it into rigid forms like this, it can lose a little bit of life and gesture. I tend to look at these two very different approaches as working out two separate muscles. When doing a finalized sketch, these perspective drawings will really help you place your character in three-dimensional space. But looser gesture drawings help you understand the natural rhythms and curvatures of the body. When these two seemingly separate parts of your mind can work in tandem, you can create lively drawings that are also placed in interesting and original perspectives. For me, I always like to envision myself sitting behind a camera. I can make the decision of where I'm going to place the camera, what type of lens I'm going to use, and how close I am in relation to the figure. As I've mentioned before, the drawback to this type of method is that it can create stiffer drawings. So it's really crucial to loosen up and do some quick gestures every once in a while. Now let's look at some more stationary poses, but this time our characters will be sitting. Once again, I start with the line of action, which in this case is going to be pretty sharply curved, as the pelvis will have to be shifted in order to sit. In addition to that, you'll sometimes see that people will shift their torso to one side of the chair, placing their weight on their elbow. This character is placing his hands in his lap, and he has his legs crossed. I quickly indicate some of the major shadow shapes and just some of the clothing folds. Once again, this character is going to be crossing his legs, but notice how he's shifting all of his weight to that arm on the right. There's such a strong degree of dynamism, even in poses that you would often overlook. Alright, now let's move on to more action-packed poses. For these, I'm going to do a bunch of really short 10-second gesture drawings. The reason I'm keeping them very short is so I can capture all of the minute motions in an animation sequence. 
We're still looking for the same things, the line of action and the major masses, but we want to take note of how these are changing over time. The kind of reference you want to use for this type of exercise is a video either slowed down or just done frame by frame. This particular sequence is a somersault. Notice that as the person approaches the roll, their body becomes nearly parallel with the ground plane. At this point in the gestures, the legs have now lifted from the ground, and the upper half of the body plunges towards the ground, elevating the legs above the head. The legs then begin to swing forward, progressing the circular movement. The person's feet then re-establish contact with the ground and begin to lift the torso above. Now nearing the end of the roll, the person begins to lift their torso and resume a standing position. Now the fun part of doing these types of drawings is that you can play them all in sequence and you make yourself a nice little animation. So let's try this again. This time our character is going to be jumping over an obstacle. I'm starting with the latter half of a run cycle. The character encounters the obstacle and places their hand on it and then lifts their legs upwards. The character tucks his legs into his chest and then swings them forward to continue the forward momentum. The arms remain in contact the longest, so they lag behind. Then the character catches the ground with his dominant foot and resumes his standing pose. Alright, that was fun. So now let's take a gesture and pose it in a few different perspectives. The gesture I'm doing is of a character swinging an axe forward. My gesture looks a little bit peculiar in an orthographic view, but it'll make a little bit more sense when I do it in perspective. I'm starting off with the cylinder for the head, and we can tell that the camera is positioned below this point because the ellipses are curving upwards. Now to indicate the forward tilting of the ribcage, I create this primitive form on an angle. Notice that it's sloping both up to the right and out of the plane of the page. The trickiest part about this pose is that the back leg is swinging forward while the leg on our left remains behind. Now we'll both elevate and rotate the camera, so that we have a top-down view from the left. Again, take a look at my previous video on poses, so you can get a better understanding of how to create these structures. Now I'm bringing the camera back to the level of the pelvis and placing it behind the character. If you feel comfortable, try to do these freehand, it really helps build a sense of perspective. So now I'm going to tie some of these principles, as well as those discussed in the cloth video together, to create a nicer looking sketch. I'm working in pencil as opposed to my usual pen because I want to start loose and with a light line weight. Then when I place in darker, more finalized lines, these early marks will be of less visual importance.
And that's about it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'm going to be doing everything traditionally from now on. And if you enjoy the content we're putting out on this channel, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. That way you can be aware of any time we'll be live streaming or putting out new videos. And if you'd like access to the full archive of live streams, group lessons from me, or one-on-one -on -one lessons, consider subscribing on Patreon. And if you'd like to learn from me in person, consider joining one of my classes at the Brainstorm School in Burbank, California. Thanks, guys.